It may not look much, but this is a special day at the Santa Pod drag strip. And while the crowds could be classed as, well, minimal, today actually represents the leading edge of alternative fuel research. All shapes and sizes have gathered to battle it out over the quarter mile drag strip, trying to become the first ever fastest alternative fuel vehicle, ranging from 100 pound conversions done at home to more sophisticated electronic modifications. Nothing here runs on straight petrol or diesel. I'm going to be trying my luck in this, the experimental Lotus Exige 270E Tri-Fuel, a carbon-friendly car that can out-accelerate a Ferrari F430. More of that later. Right now, I think I ought to check out the opposition. These are brothers Sam and Oliver Young and their electric beetle, Black Current. We had a beetle that we, we didn't have an engine for and we found an electric milk flow and we slapped the engine out of the milk flow into the beetle and oh, made it. Just because that was there that, and was, that there, was there, that was there. And so you um, thought you put them together? Yeah. How much did this cost you? Uh, well, we reckon it's probably something about 10 grand over the years. We keep adding to it. And slowly, what problems but... have you had then? And what's been the main holding you back? Um, the main problem was getting all the power down, getting the traction. Oh, it's got uh, so much power. Yeah. So much power, yeah. yeah. We snapped um, our original drive shaft. We snapped the drive shaft yeah, with yeah, an electric yeah, engine. them in the middle, yeah. But now they have stronger drive shafts to cope with the power. We looked on expectantly to see what sort of time we'd have to beat. The crowd could barely contain their excitement. A time of 15.9 seconds at a speed of 81 miles an hour might be impressive for a milk float, but it's safe to say electric is not the future of going fast. And it didn't impress the VIP. Nor is chip fat the future. It's fantastic to see a whole fleet of vehicles here used by people who've taken a leaf out of our book and run their cars on waste oil from their local chippies. But although it's dirt cheap, it's not really refined enough to boost performance. Smells of chips. Nor was I worried by the racing trucks running on biodiesel. Impressive as it is watching a 1,000 horsepower engine powered by sunflower seeds doing the quarter mile in 14.2 seconds. Although, when you can actually see the carbon footprint, you have to wonder if alternative fuels are all they're cracked up to be. But there was one more rival, Bike Magazine's Fast Fruit Project, a Triumph Daytona that runs on apples. So Rupert, whose idea was it to make ethanol out of apples? Ethanol out of apples, yeah. Right. It, it was my idea actually, Tiff, yes. And who's making it for you? Uh, I, got a, I got some uh, A-level chemistry students to do it for me. I had a go doing it myself, but it was too difficult. I've been spent the last four months making two and a half litres of bioethanol. Out of how many apples? Probably about um, two and a half thousand apples. I think it's about one apple every three feet. And of course, the great thing about ethanol is, is the bike is faster it is. on ethanol than petrol. It is faster. From tick over upwards, uh, it's giving more power. And it particularly feels in the mid-range. So, so when you ride the bike, it just feels fat and smooth and friendly and... It smells nice, is it? Fruity? It smells you... bloody awful, oh, actually, it yeah. It, in fact... <laughs> I uh, the apple might smell not Well, by, by the time you distilled it three times, the apple's aroma's gone, really, and it, it, it smells pretty uh, ordinary. You don't see this, though, as the future, really? Apple no. Apple producing... Uh, no, I don't think so. You do, the the uh, energy we put into the distilling and fermenting process is probably about, a, you know, a thousand times more than the energy we're getting out. So, uh, yeah, it's probably not a not a very viable way of making fuel. I had a suspicion that this would set the quickest run of the day so far. And it did, 11.2 seconds and 126 miles an hour. Right then, it's my turn. We've tested a bioethanol exige before, but this is the next development. If you're worried by all the CO2 in the world, then this really could be the answer because the 270E can run on methanol created from carbon dioxide that's sucked straight out of the atmosphere and mixed with hydrogen that's extracted from water. It's a revolutionary idea and means the Exige uses up what it puts out. Now, there doesn't need to be any real modifications to the 1.8-litre supercharged Toyota engine sitting right behind me. They just muck around with the fuel injection nozzles and the engine mapping or something. 
Otherwise, you can just put in petrol, bioethanol, or methanol. And with methanol, this is now the most powerful Lotus Exige ever made, with 270 horsepower that launches it to 62 in just 3.8 seconds, at a top speed of 158 miles an hour. The question is, will that be enough? This is it, my attempt at becoming a world record holder. seconds and 107 miles an hour. Just a little bit of lag on the pickup. The engine feels really good when you've got the throttle wide open. Every time you change it up, it's a little bit of a hole before it just gets going again. I'm not sure whether that's the clutch me or methanol. I hadn't beaten the bike, but I'd still set the record for the fastest alternative fueled road legal car over the quarter mile. Now that's my kind of tree hugging.